We are building the Smithsonian jet engine. Um, after looking at these directions, they're not very good. Uh, there's no detail to tell you exactly which part is which. And after looking at all the different fan blades, my son actually discovered these ones. And this is where we started. And we told ourselves if we messed up, we just go back and do it again. Um, when you're doing this, you actually want to offset them because the stick will not go in when they're even. See how they're all lined up? and the stick's not going in so we talked about it and we decided to offset the blades and we just kept trying a couple of times until we decided on offsetting them and look how much better it looks once you offset them and then the, the stick went right in so we got step one and two done and then step three we tried a couple of different blades until we finally figured this part out um, we did mess up and we did go back and do it, but it really wasn't too painful because it was only the beginning and we weren't frustrated yet. These instructions are very frustrating. They don't have details. So when you put these on so that you don't make the same mistake we did, there's like 12 or 14 of these little blades. And the first two, you want to make sure the first one out of all those blades, there's two of them that have a nub on them, which is a little rounded part. And when you get to it, you want to put the nub one on first, and then a normal one on, and then we put this glue piece on, and you'll see what I mean as this goes along. This is the stopper. He actually discovered you put that little red piece that has a little nub on it, and you put a, a white stopper over it. Now these are the pieces I said, there's like 14 of them that are the same. You put 11 on, and when you do this, you want to put... I believe it was the nub one on first, and then the rest on, and then the nub one on last. I'll show a picture here in a moment, but this is him putting them all on, and it shows how you gotta line up. And this is when I started to notice that some had nubs on them. And when I say nubs, I just mean like a little cone. See how like there's a gap? It's because we have some of those nubbed out or coned out pieces. And the instructions, I did notice that at the end that there's a little coned out piece and stuff, and started paying more attention. It's really hard to tell though. They didn't have them numbered or anything and I thought that I thought I was following these instructions the right way but I wasn't because they were more confusing than I thought. See how there's some nubbed ones? They're like coned out in there. They're supposed to be flush. So we do go back and take all those off and put them back on the right way. And I'll show that here in a moment once I get to that part. Because we go pretty far before I notice it. On this we're just looking at all the instructions trying to figure out how to follow them it's pretty complicated okay so this is what we figured out we got the blade on like that the two bigger blades actually go down here then the cone then the stopper and then all see how the nubs at the beginning next to the white stopper and then all these little blades are the same and then a nub goes at the very end after that red stopper So this is how the beginning is supposed to look. And we figured this out through trial and error. So, And it really won't affect a whole lot in the end because these individual blades don't do anything. I think it more or less will affect the sound that comes out, but it's more for looks. Then we put on this coned red piece and it took me a while to figure out the difference in those. There's three of them. And you always want to make sure the cone goes towards the other blades and the open end goes up. And he just slides all of these on, taking his time. This wasn't even the frustrating part yet. And you can see the difference in the cone sizes. Stage one is the smaller one, stage two the bigger, longer uh, wingspans. Then you get another little stopper that goes on there. It's a red piece with a nub on it and you just slide a little white piece over it. Then this is the cone that goes on the very end. It was easier to clamp it on and then slide it a little bit than clamp it together and try to slide the whole thing on. And then we accidentally popped it off and we put it back on. And it looks really good. 
It's actually really impressed that he was able to do all of this. He's only six years old. So this is a side view of it all. And all the little blades and all the little nubs and the stoppers and everything and where they go. And then this is the clear plastic casing that kind of holds it all together. And you kind of play with this a little bit till you find out that it actually slides in those little stoppers and kind of holds it so nothing can move out of place. I like this because it's clear and you can see right in and see what it all looks like. And then he figures out that I think it goes upside down at this point. And then he puts the other one on and they clip together. And you can see the four screw holes, so we put screws in all four of those holes just to hold it together. We didn't look at the directions too much at this point because some of it was common sense and then we went back and checked to make sure we were doing it right. But he tested it out to make sure it was spinning and everything was in the right place and all the stoppers were holding correctly. We moved on to the next step, we grabbed the blue cover and we found the little three lights and they're rounded, you know, that the piece is rounded so it fits right in there and there's only one screw that goes in there and in the directions it tells you how to run the wire so the wires don't interfere with the rest of it. And we just kind of press it down in there and put the wires in the little tiny groove that's cut out for it and then screwed it in. And this is how they say to run the wire alongside and there's little grooves where it can go into and you just kind of slide them into those. And then this piece goes over top of it to hold it in there. And what I realized at the end, don't do this, is that those blue wires were actually supposed to go into those grooves too and come down. So there's a white and a blue wire that also means you should have four wires, a black, a blue, and two whites that go down into that groove. We did have to go back and put them back in later after I realized this. But it's a good thing I make these mistakes so that everybody else knows and I can help others. Also, my son is still screwing because we realized he put the wrong screw in. And I said, where did you get that screw? So almost every screw you use will be the small little screws. You'll notice when you need a special screw. So this part's for the handle and there's two little red pieces, my son had pushed them together and then he noticed that there's some pieces that look just like it that are already cut out. He puts them on and here we realize he put them on wrong. The rounded side is actually supposed to be facing upward, not towards the, the hole. I never did figure out why it points out this little spring thing. Um, I believe the reason why is because there's actually a spring right there. You can't really see it in the black holder in there. And I believe that the spring is supposed to be wedged in there so that the spring will rub up and down that black holder to kind of rev the engine as you go up and down with it. And I believe that is what it was doing because I couldn't think of any other reason for that spring, but I do believe that I am correct that it's creating contact when it rubs on that because there's no other way to get contact from the lever to all the other pieces. And then we find these two little orange pieces and I screw the one down 
and this little white gear is in the screw bag and there's actually a little rod that's in there too and it just rests in between this gear and on these little grooves that are cut into the orange piece. This took me a little bit to figure out too because there's not very good instructions. And then once I got it fit in there, I put these two pieces in and they just kind of barely touched that gear that we put in. So I did have to take these out to put that in. I had to take out the handle and that long gear thing, but it worked out. And then we put the cover on and screwed it down. I hope this makes sense because this did take a long time for me to figure out and the instructions weren't very good at really specifying it. I just kind of looked at it for a while and this is what we came up with and it works. And then there's another orange piece that goes on this side to kind of hold this side down so that this long bar thing can't pop out of its spot. And in this spot we realize the clear red thing goes into the hole. I know I'm calling a lot of things things because I don't really know what they are. This looks like a little hat. It's actually a button and it goes in the hole next to it. And these are all in the instructions but they weren't very good instructions. Again. And the pieces weren't labeled or anything so you do kind of have a guessing game at figuring them out. But since we knew that lit up and this has a light bulb on it, we knew that these pieces went here and then we screwed it down and then after looking at the hat it was the only piece that wasn't fully hollowed out so we knew it was a button and there is a button piece so we went ahead and screw this one in I let my son use the screwdriver since it's magnetic and he was testing it out And then here, I show him the button piece and how it goes down and explain to him that the button is going to press in on this button to make it work. And then he screws it down. After we finished that, it did say to do the wiring, but we decided to do the top part next to kind of give ourselves a break. And we, this is where I realized that the white and blue wire were not in. So 
So I took everything apart and backtracked and put the white and the blue wire into that spot and then screwed it down. It was extremely frustrating getting the screws in at this point. You can get a small screwdriver in there, but it was really hard to squeeze it in and try to turn it and hold the screw in with a magnetic screwdriver. It kept pulling the screw back out. It was very frustrating, but we did get it in. And then I took it all apart again and put the wires in. This is when we screwed the motor to the blue engine part using those four screw holes that we had noticed earlier. Then my son, being the clever boy he is, noticed that there is matching wires for everything and he went ahead and attached all the colors that needed attached. The blue wires go to the blue, the green wires go to the green, the red wires go to the red, and then there are two black wires that plug into the double black connector, and then there are three white wires that plug into the three-piece white connector. And he noticed all this on his own and he went ahead and connected them and then we double checked them to make sure they were in and none of them were loose. Then we carefully put the base of the board on, trying to make sure none of the wires got pinched and making sure that the bottom was placed on first so that it can hold the red bar in place so that when you move the lever up and down, it won't pop out. Um, here's my son playing with the screws a little bit because he likes the magnetic part and I'm just waiting for him to screw it together patiently. And then this is the final step, was getting this clear, flimsy piece of plastic in. I did realize that the bottom piece, I had to loosen a screw to get it to slide into the wedged area. And then I screwed it in tight so it won't come out again. And then my son bent a few of these trying to get them in. And then I went ahead and put it in for him. If you do it right and you take your time, there's no need for tape or glue or anything and everything works out great. I did have to get tweezers to get it through some of the holes because my nails aren't very long, but worked out great. They pinch through and then they expand once they're in the hole. During this time, my son decided to test out a couple of times to make sure everything worked. He was a little scared of it.
press the button to turn it on. And then this is the final product. When you turn it on, the light comes on. And as you move the handle up Whoa. higher and higher, the engine like does go faster and faster and gets louder and louder. I did have to mute it because it's it gets so loud. Speed.